All of the things that we have accomplished. When I think about my husband, I think about the boy that stood outside my choir room door and was like, hey, Tammy, I see the person. And those of us that are in ministry get so caught up in the title or the position. Yes, he's a pastor. Yes, he's a Grammy winning producer, but he's Gerald. He's my high school boyfriend. I'm intentional about his heart being safe with me. Hey, 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 peoples, Tim Timmons here with another 10,000 Minutes podcast. We're in season three, and this season, if you've been with us, is all about relationships. And today we're talking with Gerald and Tammy Haddon, some of my faves. I love having people on here that I want to learn from, and I think my friends, you, would want to learn from and with. These guys are awesome. I met Tammy years ago when... Her and I were writing at a Maverick City songwriting camp. It was the last write of the whole camp. And I remember we both were just exhausted and just had a rough week just in other things. We both ended up just crying. We were with a guy named Stefan Cashwell. And we ended up writing this song called Never Let Go. It's on my last record and my last live record as well. And her and I did a duet on both of those. And so if you want to hear this girl sang, I mean, she does not sing, she sangs. I'm just a huge fan of her, but her husband, Gerald, also came and played at one of my events with me, and I just love them. They're just open, honest, real. There's not a lot of BS in these people. They're just wonderful humans. Anywho, they're going to be talking about marriage, and this is more than just marriage. I think this is just relationships, intimate relationships. So whether you're dating or in an intimate relationship or about to be in one or want to be in one, this is really great stuff. So they're a husband and wife producing team. They've got a ton of Dev Awards, Stellar Awards, Grammys, all that stuff. The way that they talk about each other and are learning each other and curious about each other and growing with each other, it's just inspiring. I think you're going to love this episode. And if you want to hear more about them, you can just go down to the show notes. There's a ton of stuff in the show notes that's just helpful for everybody. And if you guys love what we're doing with season three or the podcast in general, or if you're loving our free text messages that we send out every week, which you can put in your phone, 59925, 59925, and put the word in 10K, 10K to the subject, and then just push send, you'll get all of our info. But if this stuff's been helpful, would you subscribe to this so you don't miss any episodes? And if you'd like to join the 10,000 Minutes community, we have a Facebook community. We'd love for you to join us there. I love jumping on there and hearing things that you're learning and chatting with you in there. And also we have the Instagrams, all the things. Lastly, if you want to partner with us, we do not have a Patreon. We just have a nonprofit. So if you want to give toward 10,000 minutes because it's been helpful for you or you love what we're doing or just you feel like, you know what, I've got too much money, then give $1,000 a month. Give $10,000 a month. Let's go. Or give $5 a month. If this stuff's been helpful for you, that's how we keep making it is through you. So if you want to help us out, that would be wonderful. So go to 10,000minutes.com at 10000minutes.com and check out all the resources we have there and also go to the upper right hand corner and it says donate or partner or something like that. Grateful for you guys. I think you're going to love this episode. Okay, here we go. Everybody, we have Gerald and Tammy Haddon. I just think these humans are awesome. I watch you and I just enjoy you. I just think you're beautiful. I mean, literally beautiful. You seem to use the internets, the worldwide interwebs as a place to just air all the things. Like you're not afraid to talk about the uh, the old sex, things that are hard in marriage and things that are awesome. And you're like flirty with each other. And I just, I just think it's great. So I thought, gosh, I would love to have you on to talk about things that you guys know and the things that you're learning and that you're in the midst of learning. Because I think all of us who are married... I mean, Hillary and I have it on lockdown. We pretty much, it's like, (laughs) but I just want this for other people, you know? No, literally. What you feel, what you feel. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
We just had a, another podcast on marriage, and my wife listened to it, and she, we're both like, I know. We got some stuff to, like, oh, talk wow. through and figure out. So we're all in process, but I just think you're beautiful and wonderful humans. So uh, my first question is, what has shaped your marriage? So you're 24 years in marriage? Mm-hmm. May, May 3rd or May 25. 25. Yeah, so we're almost there. Yeah, Come on. I love that. We're 25 this year. Oh, wow. There's been so many places that have shaped our marriage. I want to say probably the very first thing for us was getting married and then feeling like, did we make the right choice? So like yeah. that first year was really, really tough. And first two. Um, first two, first two, really tough. And we didn't know if we had made the right decision and we didn't see any people around us. Now we know we didn't see any people around us being honest about what mm-hmm. marriage was. Yeah. So we felt like we were broken when in actuality <laughs> we were just married. Right. <laughs> totally. It was just married. And, and I think communication has been one of the most learning processes. Yeah, and, learning how at to- 2023, the number one reason for divorce was communication. Yeah. And I said, oh, because we don't communicate the same. Oh, yeah. We yeah. Speak I speak English. Language. She speaks something Totally. totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I believe that. I've experienced it with her. Wow. So, okay, so we're not gonna jump on me yet. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. so the first couple of years and then another big thing for us yeah. was when we realized that we were a family. Mm. And by that I mean we had to come to the realization that my family may have had thoughts and opinions or yeah. how they felt like we should do what we do. His family had the same thing. Yeah. And until we realized, no, we are the family and we have to do what's best for us. So mm. that moment that we had to tell our prospective families, like, you don't run us and you don't yeah. run this. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was another big moment. So it's been so many yeah. defining moments where we've kind of regrouped and learned how to do marriage from a different vantage point. And yeah. we've done that multiple times. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so give a few other areas, things that have shaped you guys for good or... Children has shaped us a whole lot because parenting, you know, that's a big thing too. We didn't parent nowhere near the same. We <laughs> yeah. didn't think the same. Like we we was pulling at each other like this. Yeah. But finally we got it right. We got them out of the house. So <laughs> that's, that's right. We got them out of here. That's out of here. So we finally hilarious. That. Yeah. And so you finally found success. Finally found Absolutely. success. Absolutely. I think we still have one. Well, we still got one in house. I don't know Blair. if he's going to move. He'll try to move his wife in. Yeah, he's so we got to keep an eye on him. And she'll let him. <laughs> Me, I'm like, no, you're not moving. No yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, I think children shaped us because now we're learning that we actually like each other. Because, you know, they say after your children go, you find out yeah. um, what your marriage really, really is. Really is. And um, I think we found out our marriage really is strong. And also the pandemic shaped us. Yeah. Mm. Because a lot of relationships broke up, divorced yeah. during the pandemic. We were just saying the other day, we were riding down the street. We said, it didn't you know what? Feel it didn't different. feel no different to us. We had a blast. Because we're used to being together all the time. Because right. we have, I have a basement and I have a studio and I, I have an area. She has an office and we can. <laughs> oh, like, I, I, I didn't know what the basement, if that was a sex reference or it was like, we got a <laughs> yeah. basement. I don't know if that was a euphemism. <laughs> Both. That was both. <laughs> yeah. Because I tell yeah. her, meet me in the basement. Oh, my God. Yeah. And then after we after we do some sex stuff, I said, now come work on a song with me. So the pandemic oh was a blessing. Gosh. It was my way to get two and one. Two and one. Oh, my gosh. I think we're done. I think we're done. I think we just totally yeah, nailed it. That, that and I, then probably one last thing that was probably very defining for us is we buried one of our sons shortly after yes. he was born. And that just kind of redefined a lot for us. It let us know that we wanted to be intentional about our family, about us, us and the boys. And we wanted to lock in and and make life work. Because up until then, it was this fairy tale of my high school sweetheart. And, you know, there's issues, but we love each other. And that just kind of knocked the wind out of us and let us know that this life thing is is real. And the way we supported each other through that, yeah, it just made us be able to show up for each other in a different kind of way. The comparison between like being a Jesus follower and marriage is just ripe on every yeah. level. Like we can all say yes to Jesus, but right. it doesn't mean we're actually followers of Jesus. So when we right. say, gosh, did you say yes? I, I believe it's like, who cares? Yeah. Like, are we living into this and sustaining this yeah. continual Absolutely. walk with Jesus? Just like a marriage is like you can get married, but how do we sustain this stuff through the hard stuff? 
not to sound deep or anything, but I think. <laughs> yeah, no, please don't. Please like, don't. Right. No, Stay as really, shallow as possible. <laughs> right. No, God was so sovereign in my stupidity or in my ignorance, in our ignorance of yeah. what marriage was, right? He was so sovereign in like, you're dumb. And if I really leave you to your own vices, you're going to tear this thing up. So mm-hmm. let me kind of help you through this right yeah. right through here. And so when we look back, we knew we really loved each other. We just didn't always know how to love each other. God really yeah. helped us through some difficult times. And it wasn't until years after that we would look back and be like, yo, that had to be God. Because I, I know I didn't have that. I wasn't yeah. thinking like that. Like, we should not be together. We should right. have imploded a long, long time ago. <laughs> can, can you give me an example? I was trouble. <laughs> I was letting him, I'm gonna let him say it. Obvious. Let, me, yeah, yeah, yeah. let me start by saying this, Tim. I am sexy <laughs> and I know it. Okay? No brainer and trouble. And, and, and trouble. And so yeah. um, I come from, I, uh, how candid can we, how can, how real can we be? Please be real. Uh, anybody who's listening to this is, is into the real. We don't Okay. Need. So then let me say it like yeah. this. Ho, yeah. ho runs in my family on my mother's side and my father's side. The, what and does? Ho. <laughs> Got it. H-O-E. Got it. I I just was just making sure that Ho was yes. Yeah, H O E, and we're not talking about the. Yep. Yep. Okay. Um, it runs on both sides of the family. Okay? okay. So with that being said, attention is a thing to have women going. Oh, I like the. Oh, you could play. Oh, you could say. Yep. Oh, you yep. can. You amazing. Oh, I love that song. And yep. sometimes my mind would feed into that. You have somebody at church. I'm I'm the minister of music at the time of a mega ministry that has yep. twenty thousand members. I got right. Four or five hundred people in my music department, and you think they're not going? Oh, he's amazing! Oh, and then at times I'm like, "See, she told me I was this." Right, right, right. She said I was this, Mm -hmm. and what I found out is I learned that cheating is not just sexual. Cheating is if anything that your spouse you can't share with your spouse. If somebody says, "Mm, "You look good," and and I say, "Do I?" (laughs) (laughs) Right, you. Right. You look good too. Yeah. You're cheating if I can't show her that. Cause I know if I show her that text, mm. she's gonna be like, Who why is she talking to you like that? Mm-hmm. And why is this? So yeah. a lot of that would start stuff in our home. Yeah. And me being the dummy at the time, thinking like, oh, you just be oh, you just jealous. Oh, you just feeling like and it would cause a rift yeah. in our communication. It took a while, but I had to learn it like I'm causing a problem yeah. in our home. And then I mm. I had to learn too that hope runs in my family. Mm. And if you're not careful, Ho will run over you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. This is true. You know, that's all as real as I can say. Yeah. And then yeah. and then when he got himself together, because you got yourself together pretty like the first three years. He was he was the reason for the first two years of chaos. Absolutely. And yeah. so when he finally got himself together, maybe around year 10, I'm like, I'm a pretty good catch. And you didn't see this. And you yeah. spent a lot of time. Yep making yeah. me feel like I was plan B or that yep. I didn't yep. mess up. And now people are noticing me. And now I'm a Grammy nominated songwriter. And now, <laughs> right. and I got a little anti, like, because his thing was we moved in unison. Yeah. And I remember one of the things that triggered him, it may sound so simple, yeah. but one of the things that triggered him is there was one night we were at home and he said, okay, I'm getting ready to go to bed. And I said, okay, I'll be up after a while. And that was triggering for him because literally we move together. When you move, I move just like that. That's she, how we work. She made me take naps. Still the day, <laughs> but she take a nap. <laughs> and so yeah. for me, that may seem minor, but for mm. me to be like, no, you go do you. And I'm doing me. Yeah. That stood out to him. Mm. Like what's going on with us? What's happening with us? And while that may not have been a big deal, yeah. it was proof that we were disconnecting and that I have no middle ground. I'm not a gray area person. So either I'm a thousand percent or you may have lost me. Mm -hmm. And so those were two major hurdles for us because I think we have both gotten to the place where it was like, "Eh, if you go, you can go, you know, and we wouldn't have fought for it. And so, but we we made it. But I knew she needed me. True. This is true. (laughs) I knew she needed me. So how does that work and not play into narcissism? I know where you're coming from. I just, that line could be like. I don't think anybody's ever asked him that. That's right. good, Tim. No, it's I, true. But that's all of us. Right. Like, like no. that, that, that could either come across as like this really arrogant, like, yeah, but she needed me. So check out this. Or 
what I think you actually mean. Well, let me see if I can answer this question right. I knew she needed me because, for one, I needed her. Mm. So we needed each other. So I knew she needed me, and I need her. So yeah. at the end yep. of the day, I know we're we're a force together. Yep. So if I let something small, it was a movie. What was the movie? Um, was it The Vow? The Vow. Miss Congeniality. Huh? Miss Congeniality. No, I didn't know if that was. was no, it was The Vow. Remember first thing popped in my head. Yeah. Right. The, the daughter was mad at the mom for not leaving dad. Uh, and then mom said outside, she said, I, I stayed with him for all the things he did right, not for the one thing he did wrong. Yeah. So that made me think about it and say, like, why would I leave a, we have we have more ups than we have downs. Yeah. I can count the downs. Yeah. yeah. I can't count the ups because it's so many. Yeah. So she needs me and I need her. And how about we just fight for each other and stop fighting against each other? And I think that's one reason why we have been intentional about being transparent yeah. with our marriage because really I I really believe and I say it all the time if we had had a Gerald and Tammy somebody right. that was just willing to be yeah. like girl this is marriage this ain't like stop it yeah um we wouldn't have felt so broken but we were looking around and we're like I remember Tim I remember like sitting and looking mm. at couples in awe like what am I doing wrong like look yeah. at them I had no idea what was going on behind the scenes. 98% of those couples are not together today. <laughs> but because nobody would share, nobody was honest, yeah. I really felt like we were wrong. Like mm-hmm. we weren't, we were doing and, this marriage. And wrong. I don't think our family and parents told us that marriage doesn't look like the white dress and the tuxedo. Yeah. It actually looks like a battlefield. True. Um, army fatigue. You have to fight for it. You got to put this stuff under your eyes. <laughs> they didn't tell us this. All we saw was the dress. And somebody said the other day, fight for the marriage, not for the wedding. Yeah. Period. Ooh, yeah, dig into that for a second. Coming up, every woman wanted to have a white gown. Yeah. And everybody was getting married. Everybody was having children. Everybody was wearing tuxedos. So we were like, I want that. I want that. But don't realize you need to stop spending all that money on all that there's a lot of people that I know to date that aren't married anymore. They're still $150,000, $200,000 in debt for a wedding, wedding that they didn't even stay together five years. Yeah. So if they have fought for the marriage versus the wedding and what you see, it looks like the persona, the idea, the idea yeah. of it, preparing for it, yeah. getting glammed up, getting all done up to not know like, OK, we have to take this off, put the army stuff back on. Now we have to fight for each other because we have to learn each other. We don't like the same foods. We don't like the same places. We don't like the, and some may say that's unequally yoked. No, that's two people becoming <laughs> one. <laughs> I love people. I love scripture out of context. That's yeah. perfect. That's yeah. so crazy. Yeah. Like, so I'm my own person. Yeah. I have a way I did things before I married her. I had a way yeah. I moved before I married her. Yeah. And we didn't move the same. So now we're meshing together the way I move, the way she moved. And nobody told me that. But I'm thinking, I got this tuxedo on. She got this dress on and we look good. Yeah. You know? And then like if you're if you're a believer and you were raised in the church, especially the Pentecostal church, that submission out of context is a doozy. It's a doozy. <laughs> that's, like, <laughs> that's like a you just obey me because our genitals are not the same. Like right. totally. Else. So, totally. You, I got a package. Like, so, you do yeah, what I say. Yeah. You obey yeah. me because I cut the grass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm and I change yeah. I mow the line and I make, change I the change oil. the oil. Is that mm-hmm. a euphemism? No. Okay, I, just, I didn't <laughs> Sorry, I just I just don't know if you guys are doing that or okay, that is just sorry. So good. Yep. Yep. That is, we have to use really that good. as a euphemism. Right. Right. That, <laughs> that is so good. Um, but yeah, and so you you have a lot of women kind of suffering in silence, nobody yeah. to talk to. When you do go to somebody, it's like, oh, you just have to do what your husband says. Yeah. He's never told how to handle a wife, but you're told how to handle a husband. Wow. You know, and and so there's these unhappy homes with this mm. ideology of what happens in this house stays in this house. You don't yeah. talk to anybody. And so you're miserable and then you're raising miserable kids. And we didn't grow up um, believing in counseling. Right. We didn't right. grow up. Nobody told us. They No, men did not go to counseling. It made you weak. Yeah. It made you look like you didn't have control over your household. Yeah. But now we tell everybody, go to counseling. Yeah. yeah. Talk to somebody. And don't just go when you're upset. When, go when everything is all right. Just like you schedule, your car is scheduled for maintenance for oil change. You should schedule your relationship for a Absolutely. checkup. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm. I love that. 
what are some make or breaks in your relationship? So uh, you, you talked a little bit about the, I mean, which, which is in every relationship. There's always those moments of, gosh, somebody thinks I'm actually great. You, you're not, <laughs> um, but somebody else thinks I'm great. I mean, we all have had those moments. So you're kind of saying that there's something, there's something you've put into place saying, we don't want to have these secrets, like something that she doesn't know. We're not going to play that game anymore. What What are other things like that, that you are putting into practice? Okay. How can I put this? Women more so than men, I feel are very quick to use the, my friend thing. Mm-hmm. Like, Oh, he's just my friend. But the truth is, is he your friend because he's your friend or is he your friend because you want more, but all you can have right now is friends. Right. So we've decided very early on somebody that is really your friend would also not have a problem with befriending your spouse. We may not be the closest. Right. Yeah. Because like he has friends that were prior to us getting married, but they've been very intentional about loving me and loving my kids. Right. My phone may not be the one that rings as much because the history of the relationship is there and vice versa. Yeah. But it's not like there's this relationship and then there's no Tammy, or there's this relationship yeah. with me. And so one of, one of the girls I used to date back in way back in the day calls Tammy. Oh, yeah, she's my friend. She calls Tammy. And Tammy <laughs> so praying for her and cover her. I'm like, how are y'all doing it? <laughs> that's, really, that's really weird. <laughs> well, she's actually on here. She's coming right here. She's jumping on right now. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> let's bring her in. Love it. So, yeah. so there's that thing with the opposite sex. We have boundaries and parameters. This is a big deal for us, what I'm getting ready to say. Come on. If at any time, right? One of us is uncomfortable with something. I do not or he does not have to prove what you're doing is wrong. All I have to say is I don't like it. And it's a wrap. it goes away, right? Uh, can you give me an example? I mean, I'm yeah. sure there are a few different kinds of examples. Yeah. but Yes. So let's go back to the opposite sex thing. Let's yeah. say there's a friendship and I am uncomfortable with it. Yeah. Let's say that nothing is going on. Nothing is out of pocket. I'm just like, yeah, I don't like the way this makes me feel. Right. I'm uncomfortable with it. I don't like it. Yeah. Okay, Tammy, what do you want me to do? I don't I don't want this friendship to continue, right? Then we have to Now, now I am able to say I don't agree, mm-hmm. but we we have our debate. We about agree to that. It. We agree to that and then I'll let it go. Yeah. Vice versa, yeah. same. But see, the difference with me is I've told her, like, I don't like him. Tell him. <laughs> And, and I'm like, don't, if you don't want to tell him. Don't uncover I'll me. Tell him. I'm like, don't uncover <laughs> me. But I think there's this idea in marriage where if I say I don't like something, yeah. I've got to prove to you why I don't like it or what yeah. has happened that you don't like it. Right. And so we decided I don't have to plead my case. You don't have yeah, to plead your case. Again, we may not agree. So you don't have to plead your case. It's not about that. It's about me wanting you to feel comfortable and to feel safe. And the reason why I'm now so comfortable with that in the last decade or so is because something you said, I want you to bring this out about if being the favor factor in the watchtower. Um, oh, he yeah. defined the wife, finding a good thing and obtain a favor from the Lord. And I use favor as grace. But then you said something about watchtower. So no, no, no. Just so explain that to the, in, in scripture, when the Bible calls us help meet, help mate, right? You, you, Tim, you know, that's been used for eons in church to basically say, sit over there and yep, help him right. do whatever it is he's trying to do. Yep. But in actuality, you can find other places in scripture where that word is used and it's a military term, right? And it means almost like we're guard dogs. Mm-hmm. And that's why wives many times mm-hmm. can see things before their husbands see it. Because many times a man will not know if a woman is attracted to him or wants something from him without her being very point blank, period, because that's how men are. If I'm attracted to you, I'm going to tell you, hi, what's your name? I think you're beautiful. Women don't necessarily communicate that way. And so men usually Mm -hmm. don't know if a woman is attracted to him or something. He'd be like, what? She's never said anything. We know, but if she's not blatant and go. Exactly. But another woman can be like, "Mm, I see how she's moving. She's around a bit too much, right? Right. Yeah. Because I know how we move. And so <laughs> everything he does, even if it's the terrible chord you play, she's like, oh, that's just so amazing. Right, like, oh, you're just like, so nice. You know that chord was terrible. Yeah. And so, um, so and so when I was talking to him about that scripture, I was like, God has called me <laughs> to, to be able to watch. I see stuff you don't see. Yeah. Yeah. And so he just kind of he leaned into lean that into a little more. Yeah. And so there's that with the opposite sex. And then there's eat for us, there was even that with again family. Family. 
Yes. There was even that with family. So with me, it's just me and my brother and my parents. My husband comes from a family. It was eight siblings. Parents were pastors. And so, you know, Tim, you know how pastors, when we move, the whole family moves, right? We are a unit. And especially when the kids are gifted, it's like, no, you're my keyboard player and you're my worship leader and you're my, you can't go anywhere else. Right. You can't do anything. You can't move. You yeah. Can't. We need you. And so when we got married, as we started developing our life and where do we want to be? Do we want to stay in Detroit? Do we want to be in Nashville? Yeah. Do we want to be in LA? What we yeah. were trying to do for ourselves very much became a family issue. And family felt like they could say what we were going to do and how we yep. were going to do it. Believe it or not, Tim, that was bigger, bigger for than- us than any opposite sex issue. The biggest time Tammy told me she was going to divorce me, she said, I would divorce you. She said, I know we're happy, but to get away from them, I divorce you. I, if I got if I got to get she away said, from if I got to get away from you to get away from them. I said, mm-hmm. really? I said, we live here. We on our own. No, I need to get away from them. Now, don't I'm get crazy. me wrong. Totally love my husband's family, right? Yeah. He loves my family. But nah. you know, it's got to be boundaries. Yeah. yeah. Right. It's got to be boundaries. And those boundaries for many, many years were crossed. Yeah. And we just had to find a way to navigate it. Because yeah. for a son, it's not easy to tell your mother or your father, yeah. like, no, you're not going to you're not going to yeah. do that. And so that was probably the biggest test for us because it wasn't just a one time thing. Yeah. It took years to suss it out. They had a meeting one time in our first two or three years of marriage. They called a family meeting and they said, <laughs> they said, who feels like... No, they said, who at this table... I remember. They said, who at this table has a problem with Tammy? And everybody raised their hand. Even his grandma <laughs> said, my, my grandma was over there. She just, she don't know what's going on. She just put her hand... Everybody put their hand up. She put her hand up. <laughs> and, and she I couldn't said, even hear. Yeah. She couldn't yeah. even hear. She's like, oh, yeah. no. And I yeah. sat there and listened to everybody take their turn. And what kind of blew my mind was... Nobody could say anything that I had done. What they weren't liking was that our marriage was causing him to move differently. And so he was making decisions that they felt like he never would have made without me, which is true because now you've got somebody in your corner and I'm like, oh, you want to move? Okay. If we fail, we're going to fail together. Let's go. I'm feeding her my dreams. Yeah. I'm feeding her my dreams. And she's saying, you can do it. Let's Let's do do it. it. What do you want to do? And I'm like, okay. And then they're like, it's Tammy's fault. <laughs> like, no, it's mine. She just pushed me. I said, yeah. yes. And um, yeah, so it was a thing. Yeah. So those are some things that we we yeah. navigated yeah. through and we just, we stood on business, Tim, and it made it do what it yeah. had to do. Now they won't even call and ask for $5 or ask and they come over without saying, without- where's Tammy? <laughs> hey, Tammy, we love you. <laughs> That's but, obvious. That is That's obvious. Yeah. Yeah. But so ultimately those are boundaries that you've said, we're going to do this together. We're not going to argue about these things. Yeah, right. we're just this is this is what is. How do we protect this thing? Not the Absolutely. not the wedding, but how do we protect this marriage? Absolutely. And what's, I, I mean, not that I've ever had this problem in my marriage. Other people, I hear, so I hear. <laughs> but we're always fighting to be right. Yes, Ooh. it sounds like you guys are saying, okay, both of us now have these different thoughts, and we could fight for who's right, who's not. But that's not really helping the marriage at all. That's just helping somebody be right and win this fight or this whatever. Absolutely. So I love that. You you guys are almost saying this is not about right or wrong. This is how I'm feeling in this. Let's support this marriage. We can talk through it, but I feel weird in this and I don't love this. So how how do we protect this marriage instead of the wedding? I love that. Yeah, because most of what what, I'm saying, which one? A team, uh, a win for Jarrell is not a win for Team Hatton. Yep, and a win win for Tammy Tammy is not not a win win for for Team Hatton. Hatton. And because, you know, because most of what happens in marriage is subjective. Yeah. Because we Mm. come from two different places. We don't think the same. We don't feel the same. And so if we're wasting all of our time to see who's right, we're never going to move forward. Now that you brought that up, that was a big transitionary period for us. When we stopped looking at our marriage as Gerald and Tammy, and we let the marriage take on an identity of its own, and then we would come to the table like, okay, this may be a win for Tammy, but this marriage will lose, right? You know what I'm saying? And so we started discussing issues based on what was best for the marriage Marriage, and not necessarily what was best for either one of us. There's a lot of times I was like really winning. But I was losing at the same yeah. time, right? Because it was right. costing me something, mm-hmm. and didn't realize it. 
Yeah. So when I've turned that corner and said, oh, oh, let me fix this because the, the bedroom, I, I like for our bedroom to be happy. <laughs> and I'll say something during the day and put my foot down. Oh, it's my way. And then look at when it's time. Hey, you, you, you. she's like, um, I got a headache. Oh, I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm just yeah. not feeling well. Yeah. yeah. Go, go cut the grass out. somewhere else. Right. Right. Exactly. <laughs> right. Go change the oil somewhere else. Right? <laughs> yes. See? No, I actually right. don't want to say that. That's not helpful. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> I mean, the hard part, too, in that, you know, some of us, most of us go extreme. So if it's just the marriage, then we lose our identities, which you're not saying. No. Because that's what that's one thing is like, no, we're just now I'm Tammy. I, you know, no, yeah, right. Right. We, we are still these two individuals with things, but we as individuals are fighting for the togetherness of this one marriage, Absolutely. which seems to be the most beautiful and healthy thing when I can be sober enough, when we're sober enough to see that. Right. I yeah. love that. I love that because because that's a hard thing to do because we either lose ourselves in the marriage and then it's just, you know, uh, it's not us anymore. We're one. Yeah. Which yep. that's doesn't a, that's mean that either. Thing. Huge thing. That's the thing because I was just talking to a young woman like two weeks ago because I'm in I'm in a seminary. And so I went on to campus for an intensive and I was talking to one of the young women and I said, you know, people always talk about the negative sides of marriage, right? And people talk about the positive sides to amazing yeah. marriages. I said, but there is a negative side to having an amazing marriage. Mm -hmm. And she was like, what is that? And I said, well, if you've ever had surgery, I said, sometimes they use these sutures that you don't have to have taken out. They just kind of dissolve into you. I said, that's kind of what happens with really good marriages. Like you just kind of dissolve into each other and you can lose your identity if you are not intentional, right? Because uh, there's nothing like a good marriage. There's nothing yeah. like coming home to your person, waking up next to your person. And so you have to be intentional about yeah, but there's the, what do I like? What do I love? What do I enjoy that they may not be big on, right? Mm -hmm. And I think you owe it to yourself and your partner to still feed those sides of you because those are the things that they fell in love with. Like True. they didn't want to look at themselves in the mirror. Like they fell right. in love with you and the beauty of what was so unique and different. And so I think you owe it to yourself and your marriage to still feed those parts so that you come to that union with your authentic self. And I hate to say this, but most men, we constantly feed ours. We'll move, for example, in our marriage, when we first had children, I would just leave because I knew I had somewhere to be, work, a gig or something. I never asked, hey, you want me to take the kids? Or can you watch or the can kids? I, can you watch the kids? Or can I cook? You need me to do something? I just be like, hey, I got to be a so-and-so at three. See you. <laughs> See you when I get back. You know, and not knowing because um, she would put her things on the back burner. Mm -hmm. And wouldn't say it, but she's putting her school on the back burner. She's putting her life on the back burner for me. And I'm just moving ahead, not yeah. knowing that it's causing another situation in our relationship. So one of the first things I did was when I found out, she used to always talk about school, always talk about school. One of the things I did was say, hey, babe, what's stopping you from going to school? Well, I know you need me here to do this with the church. I know you. No, go to school. Mm -hmm. Go to school. I want you to I want you to have something that yeah. that another goal or whatever that is that you need go. So just like she pushed me, it's my turn to go, hey, I'm gonna push you. I'll stay here. I got this. Don't yeah. worry. I got it. You know. Was there a time that you like began to learn that? Or is that just years of doing it the wrong way and going, This sucks, that doesn't work? Everybody has a pride wall. And if you don't know how high your pride wall is, and mine used to be really, really high in that area, like, I'm traveling, I'm doing so and so. How are you gonna do this? I make more money. I'm the one that and she's telling me. Bay, I feel like I'm not being seen or I'm not getting out. I'm not get writing anymore. I'm not singing anymore. I'm not traveling anymore. I'm like, well, what's the problem? <laughs> <laughs> and it took years of doing it wrong. And I had to start chipping at my pride wall and saying like, you know what? Hmm. Let me consider her. Because if I don't consider her, one of the worst things that could happen is the day she say, what about me? Yeah. And when she says, what about me? Like she did in, like she said, in year 10, it goes, yeah. forget you. I'm like, wait a minute. She's really forgetting me. <laughs> Babe, you said you was going to eat with me. I got something to do. Yeah. I also, you, and it began to be done wrong. And I said, uh-oh, we got to fix this because we're not moving like mm -hmm. this anymore. Mm -hmm. yeah. We're moving like this. Yeah. And it, it wasn't fun at all. I was in Arizona at a women's conference and the pastor's, um, she's not the pastor's wife. She's she co-pastors with them. She invited all of these first ladies to the house. And we didn't know. I knew her and they knew her, but we didn't know each other. It was like 30 of us. 
And so she said, well, everybody doesn't know everybody. Go around the room and introduce yourselves. And so, you know how church people do, Tim. So it was like, and I'm pastor so-and-so and my husband is so-and-so and we pastor in the great city. You know, it was, it was a yeah. whole lot of that. And it got to, and I'm not going to say her name, and even though people probably know the story. It got to this one woman that I had never met before. And she said, hi, my name is such and such. And she said, and my husband is such and such. And we pastor these huge churches. She said, we have about 20,000 members. And um, she said, 10 years ago, I woke up and said, what about me? She said, and I went and bought a six pack of beer, a two piece bikini, some R&B CDs, and I had affairs for five years. Mm. And, you know, and then she started. First of all, I was blown away that in the room of all of this pretension. Right. She's like, (laughs) right. Right. And so I just zeroed in on her and she started sharing how kind of the affairs got exposed and her husband got up in front of their huge church and said, we're getting a divorce. Don't pray for us. We don't want reconciliation, Mm. like this whole thing. But how God had restored them. And I just began to lean into her and talk to her because what I knew, Tim, is that life happens. And I want to talk to somebody that's real in case life ever happens for me. Help me navigate, (laughs) you know? And, And just as she began to share and why she got to where she got to and how she got there, it really helped me to navigate some potential potholes and pitfalls because yeah. she helped me see them before I got there. And so that was kind of a turning point for me that I, I was intentional about connecting in friendship to yeah. somebody that had been through something and open to allowing them to pour into me. That's deep. I mean, what, what a, what a gift yes. for somebody to say, I mean, somebody in that place when every, the whole, all of our energy is to say, look how awesome we are. Yes. All right. my craps together, just so you know, yes. but right. for her to just chuck out there and say, Hey, I'm a human. Let's be human together. I that's mean, that's like, I want to hang with that girl. That got Tim. She came home and told me that story. And I'm like, oh, so I'm like, oh my God. We became friends with them a few months later, right? Yeah. In the last six, seven years, we've been really close. And their marriage is not fake. The first time we spent three days with them, I was watching to see if it was fake. I said, let me see if this really, if this of is course, really. Of course. Yeah. And when I tell you they their marriage is stronger than it ever been. Their intentionality towards each other. Oh man, it's, it's the love yeah. is real. The love is real, really real. And I'm like, okay. that's crazy. So what do you what do you learn from that? I mean, what what do you see in that that you go? I I love this when you're saying intentional. I, it's one of my favorite words is yeah. intentionality. <laughs> so what do you see that's intentional in them that just kind of sticks out? Well, what I saw was that God can put broken pieces back together. He has the ability to take anything that has been crushed. Yeah. We can look at it and say it can't be put back together. He can do it. And then you can see the intentionality on them st- saying we're going to make sure this never happens again by loving on each other. I want to make sure I'm attached to you. I'm yeah. going to make sure I listen. Me and him have great conversation. He shared with me the whole story. And then he even shared in counseling. She did counseling for like 10 months. They didn't see each other. And then he said when he went to counseling to see her because he said it was over. It was done. He said, but God told him. He said, how many times have I forgiven you? Right. Things you've done. He said, go fix that. Yeah. Not your church needs it. You need it. Yeah. Go fix that. So he said, when he went up there to visit her and he called and said, he was coming to see her, the people said, when you come up here, when you meet her, you're meeting a new her. This is a woman you ain't never met. met But he said, when he got up there, he got up there, he got to talking to him. About him. About him. (laughs) He said, he got to crying to the point. He said, it's not like a train with your (laughs) He said, I cried for about 45 minutes. Ah! He said, I didn't realize I was broken. Yeah. So with that being said, watching that intentionality of them, like saying, we're going to make sure this works. I said, oh my God, that's what we need to do is make sure this works. But you have to see each other. And one thing I noticed from them is he still sees this woman he fell in love with in college. Yeah. She still sees this man she fell in love with in college. Even Gerald and I, with all of the things that we have accomplished, when I think about my husband, I think about the boy that stood outside my choir room door and was like, hey, Tammy, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I see the person and I don't know who all your audience consists of, but those of us that are in ministry, sometimes we get so caught up in the title or the position until we don't see the people. Like, yes, he's a pastor. Yes, he's a Grammy winning producer, but he's Gerald. He's my high school boyfriend. You know what I'm saying? And so um, I'm intentional about 
his heart, not the ministry, not even the music. I'm intentional about his heart being safe with me. And I believe that he's the same way. And so that's what we gathered from them. That's what we learned from them to see the person. Man, that is so good. Just learning to see the person for who they are, not all the other things. Hillary and I have been married for 25 plus years. And it's so easy as you're newly married or just in new relationships, how exciting it is in the beginning. And so much of the experiences are first times together, parenthood, you know, success, intimacy, all those things. And then the years go by and life happens and maybe you become a parent, a homeowner, a manager of some like job or something, you name it. And being a husband or a wife or the partner starts to feel less of a priority. And it's just true. It's so hard to do. It's so hard to see the other person as that sweet person that you fell in love with. Like they're the person who has hurt you in these ways. I'm the person who has hurt Hillary or made her feel certain ways or just through all the years, things have stacked up, whatever. And we want to be people who are fighting for our marriage and not just for what was, but what is and what is to come. And that is a practice indeed. So our practice this week is actually let's rethink fighting for our marriages, our relationships as prioritizing and supporting our partner. So is your partner worth fighting for is a question I have. Just think about that for a second. Is your partner worth fighting for the person? Are they worth fighting for? Is your marriage worth fighting for? Maybe what needs to change to reprioritize your marriage? What things in your marriage, in your relationship, in life need to change to reprioritize your marriage? And what we know so well is that nothing changes without some kind of disruption. So the only way that we can actually change any pattern or habit is through some kind of disrupting of that habit or thing. So what needs to change to reprioritize your marriage? And what can you do today to fight for your marriage? What would that look like, a practical thing? Is it just starting to pray for your partner? Just praying for their blessing, for their wholeness. Even if you're frustrated, I'm frustrated, she's frustrated, what's that look like to fight for your marriage today? Let's be open, honest, and intentional in our marriages this week. And if you're bold enough, maybe even try having your partner listen to this and talk through these things. And one of the things I love in relationships is if we have the ability to look at our relationship like it's in a glass box right in front of us. It's like in this glass box that we're kind of looking inside of it, we're looking at it, we're staring at it, we're being so curious about the marriage, kind of going, huh, we see this, this keeps happening. Hillary and I have this, we have different cycles that we get in all the time. And if we're able and sober enough, we can kind of just be curious about it and go, huh, I wonder why we keep doing this, running into the same place. So I don't know, Let's, let's do this, you guys, it's worth it. The story that we hear all the time, and we know in our own ways in different seasons, is that, yeah, we can't see each other because all I see is this dumbassery that is my husband. And I can't see him for who he is because all I see is hurt. All I have is hurt. She's on the other side going, all I have is hurt. I I can't even see you for who you are. So I'm I'm curious, and I don't know if you guys got to that place of saying "We're, we're done. I can't even see him for who he is. but. I mean, that couple seems like they got to that place at some point saying, I can't even see straight because we're so drunk on all the things. So do we have any thoughts on practices or things that would help us get to that place of sobering up a little bit from our hurt and our resentments to actually see the human? Absolutely. Two things, because I had gotten there. One thing we really don't do when we're hurt a lot of times is consider We've hurt people ourselves, maybe even our spouse. And so when we're going through our emotions or, you know, 
something has happened to us, we never consider yeah. that there has been a time that you've hurt them at your hands as well. I think that helps in those moments when you recognize it's not just them, but you've had moments of being the cold one, of being the yeah. mean one, of being, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it just kind of evens you out. And then I remember a time I had a good conversation with God, Tim. I was like, I don't trust this man. I don't like this man. Like I was giving it to him. And I remember God said to me, do you believe that I put you together? And I said, absolutely. I don't know why you did it, but I believe you put us together. Yeah. And God told me, very matter of fact, Tim, he said, then trust me until you can trust him. I'll wow. never forget it. Wow. I will ne Because he was like, you say you love me. I know you don't think I'm going to put you in harm's way. So trust me until you can trust him. Wow. And I spent about a year and a half in that place. Of just like really depending on God. And what I found out as God just really worked on me is that my heart posture towards my husband was bigger than just the issues we had in our marriage. Mm -hmm. It made me recognize that I was a person that if I didn't like what you said, didn't like what you did, didn't like how you treated me, I just cut people off. I would treat you like the day before I ever met you, like you never happened. And so God was showing me through my husband, you got a heart issue. Mm -hmm. And you yep. need to get your heart right. And if you can get your heart right, then you can deal with him better. And then I'm going to deal with him. Because here's what we do, Tim. Come we want to work on y'all. No, really. That's and it. God is like, yeah. I got him. I got him. Let me work on, on you. you. <laughs> Let me work on mm. you. And then I'm going to work on him. And then y'all yeah. going to come back together. And, you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be all good. Yeah. And, and so... When I got to that place, when I expected to be able to stand up in all my rightness and be like, you did this and you did this and you did this and God don't like ugly and you did that, 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 mm. right? And when I really expected God to back me, instead, God held a good old mirror up to me Come on. and said, let's look at you. Like, I hear what you're saying about him. But like, let's let's take a look yeah. at you. And so for me, that helped me in, in those moments because it showed me my own stuff. And don't nobody never want to see their own stuff. Stuff. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's a mixture of. <laughs> I need you to say it. Stuff. <laughs> stuff. Stuff. Manure and stuff. No, you know what I mean? It's a mixture. Somebody said stuff. ST with high in the middle. ST with yeah, high yeah, 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 yeah. It's yeah. almost like the guy, there's a guy named Jesus that talked about a log and a speck. Yeah. Right. You know, right. But I don't take that often when I'm, when I'm drunk on my own emotion, sadness, anger, resentments toward my wife, um, log and spec is nowhere near my reality oh, or, yeah. or my practice into practicing the ways of Jesus. It's like, eh, hold on, Jesus. I got yes, some stuff right. to, to pick with her right now, you know, right. versus Absolutely. like, what's my crap? What's the stuff that I'm holding? Like Hiller. Now there's one of the things, you know, she's got plenty of things to say about me. <laughs> but there's something that is hard in our marriage. And, and I'd say, she'd say, this is more mine, Tim, than you. Yet my reaction to her is just as dumb and not helpful at all in our marriage. I mean, it doesn't like breed any kind of health or love or yeah. togetherness. It's like, well, I get cold and I'm a douche right back. And it's like, well, that's not helping anything. So yeah. what's my part to own in this, which is what you guys are saying. And I love that. That is just such a great aim and practice for us. Absolutely. And then we don't go any time with being mad. We're usually yeah. done with something in about an hour. Yep. Through the course of our marriage, the longest we've ever gone without doing that mad, not talking thing was almost two days. And that's because we were in Vegas with friends. And so we literally were not even in the same room. Yes. So we were able right. to avoid each other. Yeah. But we have kind of mastered the art of apologizing and forgiving really, really Quick, quickly yeah. and mm. letting it go. It's crazy how we're Well, she's my comedian. I need my laugh. So <laughs> she keep me laughing. So, so good. Yeah, like learn yeah. how to apologize, especially if you know you're not going nowhere. What are you doing? You're not going yeah, anywhere. So I tell her all the time, I say, calm down, big head. Your head too big to be out here acting like this. Just get over here. <laughs> Act like right. That is Come so on. great. It'll be, be fine. Get yeah. over here. Yeah. And so she'll be good. mad. She'll be mad, mad, but she'll be like, okay. <laughs> well, what are we eating? I was like, Come on, let's go. Let me take you to get you something. True. I love Very, that. Last yeah. season we had my mom's a therapist and she did a whole thing on the five apology languages. Oh wow. on our last season. It was really profound. I got different to ways. To oh, it was so good. It was so good. Forget me and all, all the dumbery that I have in there, but my mom's just freaking <laughs> awesome. 
but she was, it's all about the, the five level, the five, not love languages, uh, five apology languages apology. Okay. and how, how we apologize, what it looks like. Cause each of us come in different ways. Ooh, it was really good. I really good. It. You're but right. you guys are living that and thank you. Okay. We're done with this part. Now I'm just going to ask you a few quick questions and you get to, um, you get to have, it's what we like to call in the ministry, 10,000 thoughts. All right, guys, hidden talent. Go. I can whistle. <gasps> you can whistle? She can't. That's a hidden talent? I love it. I mean, are you like a really good whistler? Pretty good. Bro, let's go. That's all I got right now. That was this. I can wow. actually sing. I sing songs <laughs> whistling. Go. Okay. H- hidden talent. <laughs> Gerald. That's so pitiful. Oh my gosh. Listen to the listen to the vibrato. It's pitiful. Uh, <laughs> listen to the vibrato. If she, if she, she can't that, use the vibrato. No, no, no. I, it's, no. My <laughs> hidden talent, and I haven't done it in a while. I used to be able to play the spoons really well. <laughs> you guys. <laughs> Tammy, really? <laughs> yes, like it's almost like ham bone, but you do it with spoon. You have two spoons. I, I remember. Yes, my granddaddy uh, taught me how to play the spoons. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! You guys, you, this this season going the road. I mean, with that whistle. <laughs> I mean, that whistle. The whistling and the spoons. You oh might want to keep hiding that whistle trick. You know what I mean? But I think it's it's hidden talent yeah, for on, for on. for a reason. <laughs> okay, favorite movie growing up, um, other than Miss Congeniality. Go for beaches. Ooh, watch your mouth. Oh, <laughs> um, the word, the movie Beaches. Um, Love that. Um, beach Street. Boo. Ooh. I Wait, don't even... You can't say be- boo because your Beaches. <laughs> beaches is like an iconic. No, there me. was actually a remake. <laughs> Who want to so watch good? around and watch somebody dying? Who like remade this? Beach Street? <laughs> or be- be- what is that? Damn, you, can't, you can't do that. Don't beat my movie up. Oh, I'm so happy. We're not this here to beat is... them up, are we? Sadly, my favorite part already of this whole podcast. Okay, your best jokes. You guys, can you tell jokes? I don't tell. Jokes. Um, I don't, I don't no, either. we don't. We don't tell jokes. No, we you're just funny. we live jokes. It's we're so true. We're pranksters. So yeah, we don't, we don't tell, tell jokes. jokes. Um, okay, something that gets under your skin, like a pet peeve, not of each other necessarily, just in general. Oh, I'm um, I'm an introvert, so somebody that just kind of stands there and keeps talking when I'm like, okay, yes, okay. And then it's like, you look away and they're just like, oh yeah. my God. I'm like, not getting the clue. Now. Yeah, kill me now. Um, and, and what gets under your skin is when I try to get you to rap somebody else. Oh yeah. That gets under your skin really mm-hmm. bad. Yeah. Like rap, like literally rap? No, like ride with, so if, if like, we're around friends and he's yeah, like, yeah. y'all come jump in the car with me. Tammy, Tammy will ride with her friends. I'm like. I'm like, you ride with, like the girls will ride together fellas. She'd be like, <sighs> Cause she always wanted to be around me, so it's yeah. big that pee for her. Okay. Guess it's so true. Big one for me is shoes and stuff left all over the place, and doing not doing what you said you're going to do. Time is the biggest one for me. Biggest pet peeve for me is time. If Meaning, we say six o'clock, you're going to be somewhere six, and six o five we're leaving. Six fifteen. She the other day just had me like nails on a chalkboard. Really? Yeah, you know that. He's uh, a eight, he's an eight on the enneagram. He's he's controlling. And you're what six? I'm six. Yeah. I just need stability. Trouble. Trouble. That's I love that. Is. Trouble. Well, I love you too. I'm glad to be in the same planet as you two. I love to be a fly on the wall to watch you two. So thank you for your vulnerability online. Cause you guys, you get to, you really are that for your whole community that you're pastoring, but like a whole community of people all over the planet wow. get to watch in and go, Oh, there's reality there. Like, I love that people that are bringing in the reality there. That's not just like pimping yourself, but it's yeah. just like, this is, this is real life. Yeah. You know, my wife is funnier than all get out or man. Right. I, she really made me mad the other day. Or he had made yeah. what I, yeah. it's yeah. so helpful. So please keep doing that for the world to see something that's that's like in process still. Like you guys yes. have not figured crap out yet. You're still yes. in process and yet you're in love and you're watching your marriage like be sustained. So yeah. thank you and keep doing that. Absolutely. We got to come back and talk about sex. Nothing but sex. Absolutely. Oh, it's, dang it. I totally, totally. Yeah, we enough time to get into all the, all the oil changing. <laughs> love them. I love them. And to steal from my phrase before, I think they're wonderful. 
So just a few bullet points that I wrote down after listening. Uh, Fighting for the marriage and prioritizing the relationship over external pressures is essential. So just thinking through the external pressures that I have in my life, and those things generally tend to weigh out. Even my kids, like the pressures and the pace that we're having to make decisions about kids uh, really puts a lot of pressure on my marriage and makes the priority those things instead of the marriage. So that was that's helpful to rethink a little bit. Again, this is all about rethinking. Communication and setting boundaries about opposite sex friendships and families are important to maintain trust. I had a best friend who I still love, such a great, great girl. But early in our marriage, even in our dating, she's like, Tim, I think you need to rethink this relationship a little bit. And it's true. It's so helpful to do this. So we kind of have a bunch of, not rules, but just things that are, are probably best practice in our marriage. So that was helpful. I love that they were so honest about that. So our practice this week is rethink how to fight for your marriage. Our practice this week, all week long, if you write an X in your wrist or you do something, is to rethink how to fight for your marriage. Is your marriage worth fighting for? Is your partner worth fighting for? A healthy marriage is a prioritized marriage. So what would your next step be? Let's be open, honest, and intentional about our marriages this week. Thanks for listening, everybody. Let us know how these practices are going. Join our Facebook group would be super helpful. And I think it's helpful for you, too, uh, if you want to hear stuff from us or we want to hear from you. So please jump on our Facebook community. Get our text messages free. Put the number in 59925, 59925. And then text the word 10K, 10K. And then just push send. Subscribe to this podcast. Share it with friends. That would be super helpful. Thanks for listening. Uh, Next week is going to be incredible because this is a great season. Love you all. Love you all. Practice. Rethink how to fight for your marriage.